Hello Internet! I'm happy to announce my new book Patterns in Data Management. This book is going to appear in spring 2016. A preview is available for download now. Just see the link below. The preview has like half of the book, so 168 pages out of the 300 pages or so that the entire book contains. And in this video I'd like to explain to you why this is not a standard textbook. This is not a standard textbook. It really differs from what you know textbooks look like typically. So here's an example. Here's a chapter on indexing and here's a, subject, here's a subsection motivation for index structures. And you see this looks already a bit different. So you see here there's something with material, then a couple of QR codes, additional material, blah blah blah. So let's walk through that step by step. Material provides a link to a video. You can put your smartphone or tablet on top of that and then it will automatically link to this video. So if you click this... So let's look at index structures. So what is an index structure? Typically, if database... You see people, that's a video on YouTube. I stopped way openly earlier. available. So that's the same idea as I distribute indexing. that we to do. my students for teaching. And, and it explains the entire up. subsection. You so how I did that the data. was I first designed the videos and then I wrote this book. <clears throat> so basically the book is designed to recap the material that's already presented in the video. So you can use the book without looking at the videos. This is feasible but not the ideal way of using this book. So I typically expect that you would be checking out the video and then to recap and check back on specific things you would go to the book. So the book has a couple of nice figures here. You see it here. Those are slides taken from the video. Here, summary figures on how B-tree is organized, stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? But let's stick to this for the moment. You can also download the slides. Again, you just click here and then your browser opens up and you will receive the slides for that video. The slides are used for producing that video in the first place. So you can download that's all under a CC license available for you to use. Also teachers, hello teachers out there, hi, hello database professors, you can use this stuff for your classes I use that for flipped classrooms or inverted classrooms, as you may call it. This is really cool. All the material is there and it's a lot of fun with the students. So here you also have inverted slides. It's basically color inverted slides if you want to have that. That's for easier printing, but typically I prefer the original slides. Then there's additional material. This is linking to books or stuff that is available in your local library, hopefully. So here, for instance, we're linking to the encyclopedia of database systems. That's not available to everyone. You, you could buy that, but many libraries have that anyway. So we have a link here to this Springer version of that text, and that's another view on the content I'm explaining in that book. So if you want to read more about this stuff, you could also check this link out, and then you see that. So this may be linking to different material. Here this links just to the encyclopedia. Afterwards comes a section learning goals and content summary. And in contrast to standard textbooks, you see here that's not one big blob of text. It's organized in a Q&A style. So I ask a question here and then I answer that. You could also use that for self-learning. You could just hide all of this text, read through the questions and then try to answer it yourself. And then you check out whether what you think the answer should be matches what I think the answer should be. Yeah, that's, that's the entire concept here. So let's maybe let, let's make it a little larger. So when we go through here, you see it here. So here it's as, as simple as what are the major analogies of indexing in real life, and then you should be coming up. Then you should be coming up with something like street signs. Here you also have an index of the words that are introduced here. Indexing is introduced here. There's a term index at the back of the book, and then you can go to that use that index as well. Yeah. So the indexing, indexing is indexed if you wish. Yeah, and so forth. And then if you go through the book, let's scroll down here. Those are some slides. And there's more questions. Selectivity, for instance, is explained here, super important. Again, a couple of slides, more slides, uh, point query, range query, stuff like that. Then pseudocode, how to insert stuff in a leaf node, how to insert stuff in an internal node, and how to implement that using polymorphism, object orientation as explained here, and so forth. And then delete and merge operations, 
and then all kinds of B3 variants that are important in real life, like clustered indexes versus unclustered indexes here, or you have the dense index versus the sparse index, coarse granular index, or if you bring that to an extreme, then basically this equals no index. Huh? And a lot of Q&A, repeating the stuff, repeating all the material, blah, 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 blah. And here we are already in the next section, huh? organized in the same manner, here we go for covering and composite indexes, and so forth, and so forth. So you're welcome to check this out. A couple of nice pictures. I tried to make it colorful. I really invested into the slides and in the videos. It has taken me two years or so to prepare this stuff, and it's available for you to download to check it out. Here we are at pipelining. Pipelining in databases is super important. And the question is then how to implement those pipelines. So I talk a lot about that. Maybe let's check out a little bit the um, agenda, the overview, let's um, go to that one. Let's, okay. Here we go, so that's a cover page. So those are the contents, let's go through that. So I really invite you to, to read the preface and the acknowledgements and how to use this book. How to use this book is really important. I really explain why this is not a standard textbook and how it evolved and why I wrote it and how the different chapters are organized and what the purpose of the different chapters is. It's very important for you to understand this. Okay, so here many details. I also explain how you would use that in a flipped classroom, in an inverted classroom, in particular for teachers, how that works. I use that for teaching an intermediate level class and databases. And it, I have been using that for the third time now. So um, today, as I'm recording this video, it is December. 2015 and now it's the third time I'm using these videos for my class and uh, it, it works pretty well. So the videos are really cool for the students to recap material, material of course, but also the book helps in recapping and um, checking out stuff they maybe didn't get fully in the class in the videos. So the major chapters are like that, so an intro we have an introduction, I give some overview and motivation, some, some fun video about what database is all about. Then I explain the architecture of a database system, a little bit of history. Basically, there's also here the article, a practical foundation of productivity, which introduced relation databases more or less. Then we go bottom up in the architecture of a database system. So at the bottom there's hardware and storage. So we need to talk a little bit about hardware that's changing every year. New fancy hardware devices being invented. So here we talk about storage hierarchies of course, but also multi-core storage hierarchies like NUMA. And then we start with tape still being used for archiving. Then it's hard disk, still a lot of hard disk that's still important. And then of course we turn towards flash and main memory. To, nowadays many database systems fit comfortably in main memory and we will focus a lot on that. So in this course I teach both at the same time. Old textbooks still focus a lot on disk-based systems. Here I try to teach both. Often we will see that in this course that if you have one technique that works on one particular layer of the storage hierarchy, it can easily be used at other layers as well. And that's an important takeaway message. So we continue with fundamental concepts like shadow storage, copy on write, differential files, locked writes, blah, 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 and more fancy stuff like the no bits left behind pattern. So if you want to know what that is, just check it out. There's a video. So there's a video for every subsection here, and there are slides, and there's this Q&A style for every subsection here. Yeah, then we turn to what's data layouts. So what's data layouts, you may have heard about this row versus column thing. That's an important design decision in your database. But there are more fancy concepts like fractured mirrors. Maybe you heard about Apache Parquet. That's one example of that, of uh, this PEX actually. That's an example of a PEX style layout. And there, then there are other things like the fractal design patterns, the self-similar design databases. We turn towards compression. Compression databases is not just about saving space, it's also about saving bandwidth. So we talk a bit about that. Then there's indexing, of course, super important in database systems. B-tree is the index structure still in databases, but the second most important structure, or maybe it's even the most important, depends on your point of view, is hashing. Hash tables, super important. Talk a little bit about that. And finally, also bitmaps. Bitmaps are still very useful in read mostly or read only workloads. And we also talk about how to compress those bitmaps. So here, for instance, 
this famous word-aligned hybrid bitmaps is a very nice technique for compressing a bitmap. Then we turn towards query processing. Here we look at fundamental algorithms, join algorithms, of course, grouping and aggregation, and also external sorting, originally invented for a main originally invented for disk-based systems, but you could also use it at other la layers of the storage hierarchy. Then we go into query planning and optimization, look a little bit at the challenges and how a query, optimize, how a query optimizer works in principle. And then we look at stuff like join order optimization, looking at the join graph, doing dynamic programming with that, stuff like that. We quickly then see that we also need to worry about the query execution models. So traditionally, Traditionally, this has been done in disk-based systems using operators, and that is not the way to go in main memory systems. There are different ways how to implement such a pipeline. We will look into that. We will also look in one problem that's called tuple reconstruction, or as I term it, an anti-projection. Yes, you know a projection where some of the attributes of the schema are removed. In an anti-projection, we add attributes to a schema, and that's basically implemented through tuple reconstruction, also referred to as late materialization. It's an important design consideration. Finally, we wrap up by recovery. So ARIES is a famous algorithm invented by Mohan. We will talk a lot about that in a couple of videos if you understand that one. It's also basically, those are just core concepts allowing you to understand the ARIES and that is really, really important. We talk about trade-offs, when to do ARIES. ARIES was invented for disk-based systems in the main memory system. You might want to do something different. I will talk about that, how logging works and how recovery works in the main memory systems and what the trade-offs are. It's very important to understand. Well, then there's the usual stuff, credits for images, some YouTube quotes. I'm really happy about re receiving those positive Quotes that make me, so whenever you write quotes, I mean, you can, under my videos, feel free to, to write comments, suggestions for improvements, or videos you would like to see. So, of course, this is just a start. I eventually might be adding more chapters, so I'm planning about a chapter on big data and NoSQL-like stuff. That would be something interesting. I didn't focus so much here on concurrency intentionally because many of those things are treated in the concurrent programming classes here, at least at my university. And it's evolving also pretty quickly, so it's hard to keep track of what's going on there. Many, many changes. But maybe in future I do a chapter on, a dedicated chapter on concurrency, maybe. There are many things that could be added to understand. This is a start, and I hope that this book helps and deepening your understanding of databases, but it also makes a point that this database technology is not exclusive to implementing relational database systems. So the technology that is presented in this book really appears everywhere, be it that you're implementing a file system, be it that you implement a fancy NoSQL system, be it that you're just handling with large files in whatever application, you will run into the problems presented in this book and you will need some of the solutions that can really help a lot. Yeah, so that, that's, that's the underlying idea of this book. So we can, I don't know, we can jump into, oh, this link doesn't, didn't work because this is not included in the preview. So let's, let's look at another, uh, maybe let's go through another page. So this is just whatever, 150. Here are some Slides are used to explain ARIES. This is a performance trade-off slide for main memory and um, disk-based recovery, stuff like that. But one thing I wanted to show is that for many of those exercise, many of those, uh, I think we have to go to this page. Let's go to um, 50, maybe, something like that. Ah, uh, here we go, yeah. So here in QA style, sometimes I also extend and go beyond to what's explained in the videos. You will also find Q&As. This is Q&As you can use for self-learning, for self-testing yourself, whether you really got the material. Huh? It helps you to, to make sure you really got it. And then there are exercises after the Q&As that require more thinking and more time writing down stuff and arguing about um, the solutions. Okay, that's basically what I wanted to show. That is my new book, Patterson Data Management. You can download the preview, there's a link down there. If you have any comments, please write them in this video. Tweet about the book if you want. Um, uh, send me your feedback. 
I will be publishing it in spring 2016. At least that's the plan. So as a professor, I have many, many obligations. Intentionally, I <laughs> intended to, to publish this in summer 2015, but then many things came in the way. So, okay, so I hope to publish it spring 2016. And if you have any suggestions, let me know what, what, what you think about it. Thanks.